Welcome. You're listening to The Aligned Self, conversations in creating a conscious and abundant life. This is Daniel DeNovi. I'll be your guide and host. Let's see just where we can take this. Hello, friend, and welcome in to this second Monday Quotable. I decided last week, last Monday, in fact, if you're listening to this in chronological order, you will have noticed that it goes from Monday to Monday with no episodes in between. I actually took last week off. Didn't know I was going to do it, but it just what I just wasn't feeling it. And so rather than force the issue, I decided to pause for the cause. And so this is the second Monday quotable where I feature a quote every Monday that is meaningful and has been meaningful and instrumental in my personal growth and expanding my perception, perspective, and consciousness. Well, this quote comes from the Bible, specifically the Old Testament, Proverbs 23, 7. Now, that's where the quote resides or where the Bible verse resides, but that's not where I learned this. This is actually the title of a book that was written in 1896 by James Allen. And the title of that book was and is As a Man Thinketh. And the Bible verse says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So as a person thinks in their heart, as they believe, so are they. And I say that, you know, as a person thinketh in his heart, even though it's not said that way in the Bible or on the title of James Allen's book, to avoid any gender confusion. Well, if you have any intelligence whatsoever, you have no problem transposing between him and she and she and him. I've read many books that have written or oriented towards women, specifically women, where they use predominantly she, her, women, women believe, women experience, and I can transpose it and take the things that work for me and and leave the rest. Frankly, it's never been a problem. So with that said and stated and put aside, it is what it is, and you're going to hear it the way you're going to hear it. So if you want to download a copy of James Allen's book, As a Man Thinketh, I have it available in PDF format. Frankly, it is in the common domain, and you can find it in various places. But I have a downloadable PDF for your reading pleasure. Now, I warn you, it is in the vernacular of the late 1800s, and the Old English isn't necessarily the most comfortable thing to read. But it is what it is. So if you want it, it's available for download. Go to yesdaniel.com forward slash PDF. We'll make it easy. It's just yesdaniel.com forward slash PDF. Now, the book is relatively short. It's only 100 pages, and that was in its original format, which was essentially four inches by six inches. And so it's a small book. So if you can get past the, the English, the cumbersome use of English, and therefore and wherefore out and hither to, and then I think you'll find it quite enjoyable. So at the heart of the book, as a man thinketh in their heart, so are they. It basically says, your beliefs shape your destiny. Another quote that's in the book that I simply just love and have used often, well, basically there's this whole idea that circumstances help shape the man, that your past dictates, my wife just sent me a text, that your past dictates or informs the future, that, you know, through circumstances, adversity, it shapes you. Well, not necessarily. The quote from the book says this, that circumstances do not shape the man. Circumstances reveal the man. This also goes to the quote about a fair weather friend. Basically, you want to know if somebody is a stand-up person, if they have your back, let them follow you through adversity, and then you see how they really are. You know, when everything goes south, when all the problems arise, you actually see the people stand up, rise up to meet the challenge. If you don't already have that within you, then very often those circumstances, when they come up, they'll break you. But if there's one thing I've learned about people in general is that they're... I just got another text from my wife. I better read that. So as you can hear, my my signature sound from my wife, my wife's text, is a bird song. Well, the messages weren't that critical, but I'm glad I answered it all the same, and I did quiet my phone so I won't be interrupted anymore during this recording. So, 
Let me finish that thought. If there's one thing I've found about people, they have a greater strength inside them than they first give themselves credit for. And that if they allow themselves to rise to the challenge of adversity and different things that they don't want happening, they just step up to the plate, they actually find that they have more in them than they first learned. But what that adversity really teaches you is to go inside and actually ask that question. Because I've seen equally number of people that are confronted with some circumstances that are less than favorable and they crumble. They quit. They go home. They fold up their tent and say, I can't do this. But your ultimate freedom is your ability to choose your response. At any given moment, no one can take that freedom away. So no matter what happens, you get to choose who you're going to be in relationship to that circumstance. Another quote that goes hand in hand with this is one from Napoleon Hill and his book, Think and Grow Rich. And in that book, he wrote, what the mind of man can conceive and believe, the mind of man can achieve. It basically says whatever you believe, you can make happen. In fact, if you don't believe you can do it, it will never happen. Because my friend, you cannot outperform your beliefs. So before we go any further, let's discuss what is a belief. Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again. There is no such thing as a belief, meaning that it does not exist in time and space. It is conceptual. It is a concept of mind. You see, you can't pull it out of your pocket. You can't point to it on the wall and you can't pull it around in a wagon. You, it does not really exist, yet it shapes your entire life. It shapes your behavior. And as we discussed in the quote, as a man thinketh, as a person thinketh in their heart, as they believe in their being, so are they. So is reality. Well, a belief does not have to be true. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But if the person believes it to be true, factual, or part of the infrastructure, then it has power. It has meaning for that person. Now, each and every one of you have probably thought something or believed something in your life that you no longer believe. And I'll pick an easy one, either Father Christmas or Santa Claus. You know, once upon a time, I thought Santa Claus was real. And if you happen to still believe that Santa Claus is real, then disregard what I'm saying. Just skip over this part. But at some point in time, I was informed that Santa Claus was not a real person. It was more of a concept, something they told kids to keep them in alignment <laughs> to, you know, good behavior. You don't want to get on the naughty list, to be sure. But before that, Santa Claus was very real to me. I visualized him. I visualized him bringing toys. I visualized the whole aspect of Christmas, Father Christmas, Santa Claus, Kris Kringle. But me believing it did not make it true. It was true in my experience. It created my experience. And even to this day, I have a sense of the spirit of Christmas in Santa Claus. I like to play Santa. I like to, you know, give gifts. And from that spirit, from that perspective of Santa Claus. So that belief is still a part of me somewhere inside. So your beliefs shape your destiny. They shape your reality. Now, moving forward in the month of August here, every episode I do is going to be oriented around manifesting and law of attraction. I thought, why not do the whole month? And in those episodes coming forward, I will talk about five powerful beliefs that you can have and adopt and five disempowering beliefs that will short circuit your manifesting ability. But before I leave, I just want to give you something that you can put into practice. There are things that you feel fairly certain is true. There's a feeling of certainty. Like you can say it absolutely positively, I can tie my shoes. I know how to tie my shoes. There's confidence. There's certainty there. I'm, 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 I'm supposing that's true for you. <laughs> it's true for most people. They reach a point in their life where they know for a fact that they can tie a shoe. They believe without a doubt they can tie a shoe. Now that feeling of certainty, you can transfer to another belief that you want to adopt and state it so. Use the tonality that is an alignment that is congruent with believing it, with feeling of certainty about it. Here's one for you. If I want it, I can have it. And I say it like, if I want it, I can have it. 
In fact, if I'm committed, it is inevitable. Now, I didn't say it like this. If I want it, I I could have it. I, I could. If I'm committed, it's it might be inevitable. It could be inevitable. See, you want the tonality to be behind it. If I'm committed, it is inevitable. As I align my heart, my mind, and my body, it is positively, absolutely going to happen. So not only do you want to align your tone of voice and get behind it, the, the intensity in your voice, but also how you're standing, how you're moving your body. There's a particular way that you move and stand when you have confidence, when you're sure of something. So if there's some belief, if there's something that you want to incorporate into your being, say it out loud. Words that are spoken out loud are 10 times more powerful than when they're just simply thought in your head. So when you can speak it out loud using the tonality the of certainty, the tonality of like you mean business, you have the intensity behind it, along with the gestures and the posture and you're standing up straight and you're pounding your fist and you're hitting your chest like, dang it, this is what I stand for. Are you getting it? Do you understand it? I'll say it again. I'll say what I had incorporated for myself. If I want it, I can have it. When I'm committed, it's inevitable. You see, there's no mincing words. There's no hesitancy. There's no, I mean, you can hear it in my voice. I'm coming across loud and clear. And if you want to add even more emphasis, go over the top. Say it even louder, more vibrato. Yes, I am an iron pillared person. When I'm committed, it is inevitable. There is no stopping me. Well, that's it. You play with that. You experiment with that. Get back with me. Tell me how it's working for you. And remember, as a person thinketh in their heart, so are they. And understand, as we move forward, we'll play with this concept more and more. So until next time, this is your friend and host, Daniel Danovi, urging you to follow your bliss. Live your life from inner signals. Be inner-directed as you engage in the epic adventure. <laughs>